Hi guys, I'm the Craft Maiden and in this video I'm going to show you how I made the Monster Book of Monsters from Harry Potter. As you can see he's a bit smaller than he's supposed to be but I don't have the room for a big one so I made a small one and as a notebook. And so I can write stuff in him and maybe he will grow up to be a school book eventually, I don't know but maybe. I can only hope. If you want to make one yourself, please check the description box down below. I have listed everything I use in this video over there. So keep on watching and I hope you enjoy. To begin, you need a book in any size you want. If the pages are white, you can always clamp the book together and paint the edges. I find it easier to blend the paint as I go when doing this and the paint won't be in one color and be more lively. When the first layer had dried, I went over with a darker paint in the corners to get a more used look. When the paint has dried, I took off the clamps and separated the pages one by one. For the mouth, I made a roughly sketch of how big it should be and started with the teeth. I rolled small pieces of white Fimo into droplets and bended the pointy end a bit for a more natural look. I also made a few extras in case I needed to have another shape or form before baking them all. For the gums I used Super Scalpy that I shaped to look like the template and the reference photos I had at hand. And as I baked the teeth beforehand it's easier to put them into place and even move them around if I needed to. If you want the mouth to be shut when the book is closed, I would recommend that you only bake one of the gums at first and then glue it on before you bake the other one so that you can make any changes to it if it would be too high or too short or even if you need to move a tooth that is out of place. As I'm making the tentacles in clay, I would need to reinforce them with some wire. I'm just twisting a piece of wire together and cutting it off and letting the two pieces that is left stay on there so it would be easier to stick it onto the book. And before adding the clay you would also have to give the tentacle the shape you want it to have as it's easier than making it afterwards. Then I added clay to the wires and placed them according to the reference photos. When you're happy with the placement just fill in the gaps in between so it becomes one piece and easier to move around. And when you're doing this I would probably recommend you doing this on a piece of paper or something like that so it's easier to get rid of from the table. By placing the book on top of the tentacle parts again I fill in the upper side with clay so to give a more unison look to the book. But don't press the clay too hard onto it as you want it to be easily removed later on before baking it. Before adding anything else I removed the fingerprints with clay softener, then I added the suction cups by rolling smaller balls and using a pointy tool to stick them into place. When that's done I gently peeled it off and baked it. For the eyes I started with a ball of black Fimo that I kind of flattened out a bit and made a crater in with a ball tool. And to make sure the tool doesn't stick to the clay I used a bit of baby powder. Then I removed any fingerprints with clay softener and baked it. When the piece had cooled down I added some liquid Fimo as a bonding adhesive, then I placed the black Fimo in the middle as a pupil and gold on the sides as the iris. Then I cut off any excess and started to shape the eye. Right now you may be thinking that eye is way too big for her book and that is true. Because the eyes are so small for my book, I wasn't able to show you how I actually made them, so therefore I made another one much bigger, so you could see how I made it. As I wanted the eyes to look more natural, I made some grooves in the iris and painted it with dry pastels. Then before baking it again, I removed any fingerprints with clay softener. When it's cooled down, I added a layer of liquid Fimo to fill in any grooves and smooth out the surface and bake it one final time. Here you can see the size of the eyes. The book has four eyes in total, two bigger and two smaller ones. 
I'm using Super Scout Boot to make the rest of the eyes and nostrils. As you can see here, I already started with the left side. That is when I am sculpting something or I need something to be symmetrical, I always start with the bad side, my left. So by making the left side first, I find it so much easier to copy it over to the right one, my good side. So if you ever feel it's difficult to mirror something, try to start with your bad side and copy it over to your good side. When you feel satisfied with the look, remove any fingerprints and bake it. When I work, I usually improvise as I go, so when making the text I roll out a thin piece of clay between two wood pieces to get the same thickness. Then I transfer the text onto the clay, cut out the letters, smooth out the edges for smoother transition and baked it before filling in the letters with liquid Fimo. Afterwards I realized I should have used a smaller ball tool or a pen or something to just deboss the letters. But hey, if you don't have one, you use anything else and you come up with the same results anyway. So feel free to do it however you want it to, but this is just how I made it. Then it's time for assembling. I used super glue when doing this and if you let the clay parts be a bit warm still, they won't break as easy when you are pressing them onto the book. And as you can see here, I made a small piece to fit in between to fill the small space to make the assembling a bit easier. As I already glued on the top part of the mouth, I could easily glue on the bottom. So to protect the pages from any glue, I covered them in plastic wrap. And to keep the mouth in place as the glue dried, I taped it shut. Then I used some model fillers to cover any gaps and transitions that I wanted to hide. To level the surface, I covered the whole book in fake leather as it has some bald spots that will show the texture underneath. I fixed it down with regular school glue. Then I cut off the excess and glued on the edges. And then again I filled in the gaps with model filler. Then I sanded down the surface and wiped off any dust. Then I marked out where the eyepiece should be and glued it on with super glue. When the glue had dried I painted it in dark brown acrylics to match the fur. For the letters I used a gold acrylic and if anything got outside the borders I just covered it up with brown paint again. As the book has lighter color on the inside, I faded the paint over the edge for a more pinkish color and I also gave some shading with a watered down brown acrylic. For the gum, I used a bit darker pink and gave it some shading with a brown one. To get that dirty teeth look, I used the same colors as for the pages but with more white in the mixture. And for the shading, I used a wash of watered down brown acrylic. I also made some highlights on the eyelids with a lighter brown acrylics. With a glossy varnish I gave some life to the eyes and teeth. And now for the fun part and to cover the whole book in fur. First I marked out where any bald spot should be so I know where to not glue on any fur. I used a bit darker fake fur for this but you can use any color you want to. This is the part that takes the longest but the results gets really awesome. So with a small angle tweezer and a small sharp scissor, I cut small short bundles of fur and glued it on bit by bit. Make sure the fur is glued on in the right directions. If you are unsure how it should look, check the reference photos you have at hand. I used regular hobby glue for this and I would recommend you start with the edges and work yourself inwards. And if this is the first time you're doing this, just start with the backside as you will have gotten the hang of it when you're starting on the front. If you find some of the hairs are too long, cut towards the hairs to avoid any unnatural straight cuts. When you are going to cover a bigger area, you can also get a bigger bundle of fur to cover it a bit quicker. On the back of the book he has a longer hair and can of tentacles, but as I couldn't find any good reference photos of that, I only gave him longer hair and in a mohawk. 
As you can see here, the fur is facing all four directions and meeting up in the middle. To get a nice transition from skin to fur, I cut shorter hair and used a bit less glue to avoid any clumping. And the final part is the fur from his nose facing forward and to the side. And while the glue is still tacky, I just press the fur a bit to give it a more shape, and he's finally done. Why not follow me on Instagram where I post sneak peeks and other fun stuff when I'm away from here? You can find the link in the description box together with all my social media. I hope you enjoyed this video, if you have any suggestions about future ones please comment down below and I might give them a go. And so thank you so much for watching, I hope to see you next time, so don't forget to like and subscribe for more awesome stuff. Bye!